don't underestimate for even a moment what a seriously serious major turnaround, straight up and down, earth rocking, game changing, heart moving, mind shaking, body shielding, action taking, tradition breaking, law making energy was released when passed by acclamation was in 1948 that declaration. The declaration was adopted by the UN General Assembly in response to the human rights horrors of World War II. We've accomplished a lot in these last 70 years in so many areas where there are unexpected successes that need to be celebrated. And if only for ceremonial reasons, today, December 10th, is the key day, the anniversary of when the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was adopted in 1948. 70 years ago to this day. On this 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, we celebrate the city and we invite national and local authorities, civil society actors and local government officials into this global movement. A global movement for human rights and for a shift. A shift to the point where cities defend rights, stand up for rights. There's a, a poem by Robert Browning that says, our reach must sometimes exceed our grasp. After all, what is heaven for? Whether it is a slave who tries to make sure there's an end of slavery and never dies free, a woman who tries to seek a vote for women but never gets to do that in a ballot. Whether it is about standing up for the rights of women, LGBTI people, migrants, journalists, disabled people, refugees, minorities and marginalized populations, or climate justice, which spans geographies and generations. Human rights are core to all the challenges we face today. If we don't fix the systemic sexism that goes on globally, um, and the misogyny that goes on globally, uh, we are going to have a very hard time fixing all of human rights. The rights that have been taken away from us, the hatred we, we receive on a daily basis, the violence that's coming towards our community is all out of just fear and ignorance. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, you need to educate these people that don't see it because we are all born human. Disability isn't a condition, it's an identity. It's an identity that people all over the world identify with and all of you, all of us will identify with it at one time or another. Because if we're living, we're aging. And age-related disabilities will affect us. I mean, my shoes are from India, my jeans are from Egypt, my shirt is from the Dominican Republic, my phone is from China, my car is from Germany, and it was all assembled in Mexico. I am a consumer of the American dream, but what about these international workers? Do they not have a right to that dream that they help build? Um, I, I really greatly appreciate this panel that, that highlights that when it comes to LGBTQ rights and women rights and disabled rights and civil rights and immigrant rights, it's all one and the same because it's all human rights. And I think once we, we start accepting, accepting that, we'll be in a better place. And maybe the answer is not to build bigger walls, but to build longer tables. Times are now more difficult than ever, here in Los Angeles, but truly everywhere. And the question of whether human rights can be part of the resistance to rising populism, nationalism, and even fascism is unfortunately on the table. How do we, universities, communities, government officials, media, and all of us who care about rights and justice get past our differences and work together to set a rights-oriented agenda going forward? I'm optimistic about the role that universities play in this struggle. We lead this effort. Research and education, sure, that is what universities do. But also, working in larger networks outside of our own bubble to affect change. Here at USC, we've been launching initiatives aimed directly at issues of social justice and human rights. Students from across our university worked with Mayor Garcetti's office to help LA's homeless. Their practicum focused on how human rights and the UN sustainability goals might offer new solutions. We can't lead this world of change with contempt for the foreigner, baseless distrust of those who look or love or worship differently. We've got to stand up again. 
Stand up to narratives of hate. Stand up for more equality. Stand up for more intimate security. Stand up for truth. Let's not stop here. Let's continue the conversation. Let's commit to uphold our actions in terms of what in our own actions it means for the UDHR and what it represents for us here in Los Angeles and to people around the world today and over the next decades. Thank you all and happy December 10th. Yeah.